Digital Radio Network. <laughs> Want to go out to a movie? Or maybe watch a movie at home, but you can't decide on what to watch? Head on over to freemovieinformation.com. The movie trailers and descriptions for thousands of movies, both current and older, are all in one place. Freemovieinformation.com. Thousands of movie trailers. One location. Freemovieinformation.com. Hey, everyone. Thanks for listening to the All Digital Radio Network. Whether you're a brand new listener or a longtime fan, you've probably noticed that we have quite a lineup. Do you have a business, an organization, or a group that needs global exposure? Have you been priced out of the traditional radio market, or are you seeking a new, innovative way to reach your customer base in this advanced digital age? Radio advertising is one of the most inexpensive and effective ways to get your message out to the mass public. We have advertising packages for almost any budget with the same quality you've come to expect from the all-digital radio network. Give us a call today at 312-324-0180 or you can email us at advertising at alldigitalradio.com. Let the All Digital Radio Network broadcast your business message to the world crystal clear. Did you know that the federal government gives away over $400 billion in grants each year to private citizens like you? Go to findthegrant.com. These programs require no credit check, no collateral, no cosigner. What you need is the correct information found at findthegrant.com. If you're a U.S. taxpayer, you are entitled to your slice. Get the information to get started today. www.findthegrant.com. You are listening to the All Digital Radio Network. <laughs> the virus has completely devastated over 150 of the world's major regions and is spreading rapidly. At this point in time, we know of only one method of killing the creatures who are going to destroy the brain. Be on the guard of any loved ones who may have recently been in any sort of contact with the infected. And if you find yourself out in a threatening position, please do not hesitate. Again, because this is not a test. This is not a joke. We as a species are overwhelmed. We are outnumbered, numbered, 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 numbered. Walker Wednesday starts now. Oh my god. They're everywhere. How's that for an intro? <laughs> and I even got the I even got the echo, our first show back. <laughs> Hello and oh. welcome to a Walker Wednesday. Uh, tonight we're going to be uh, going over The Walking Dead, episode 509, What's Happened and What's Going On with me this evening, uh, the, the wise and worldly Mr. C.B. Snow. Good evening. Great to have you here. Uh, C.B., you weren't on with us for the, first half of the, uh, for the first half of the season. We had Slim with us, but man, he's busy with his idol show right now. That's true. Well, I I had uh, Sunday night football, so I couldn't watch the episodes. Oh yeah, you gotta have your priorities. Yes. And also with us tonight, the good Miss Wendy King. Am Am I wise and worldly too? <laughs> In your own way. <laughs> hey everybody. <laughs> <laughs> you just reminded me. I had a buddy that thought uh, Barbara Streisand was the most beautiful woman in the world, and we all looked at him like he was crazy. And he would always look at us and go, she's sensual in her own way. <laughs> Yay. I, I never saw it. Uh, but tonight we're going to talk about what's happened and what's going on. You know what? You know, the, the writers of this show never do anything by mistake. We should have known when we got that two-minute clip earlier in the week, or actually the week before, on Super Bowl Sunday, um, that should have been a premonition that everyone just thought that two minutes was, was flashbacks or uh, basic catch-up script from um, Beth getting killed because we saw the graveside and so forth. But it wasn't. This whole episode was all dedicated to Tyrese. Well, I guess they gave him a good swan song. Probably the best one they've ever done. I mean, we've seen... Uh, characters just get killed for no reason at all uh poor herschel you know he lost his leg and you, you never had two seconds about it and we've had you know characters that we thought were going to be with us forever just uh you know they're gone and good riddance 
But shock uh, value. Yeah, Tyrese. You know, I, I was never a fan of Tyrese. Uh, what do you What do you two think? Were you Was he one of your favorite characters? No, he wasn't. He uh, He wasn't ever a favorite to me. I just he wasn't tough enough. He seemed a little wimpy, and well, it, in this I, I, situation, you can't be wimpy. Well, I think he held on to his humanity longer than most of them did. Mm-hmm. I think that's really what it is. I mean, if you met him on the street, he'd just seem like a normal, nice guy. Unfortunately, normal, nice guys don't can't survive in in the um, in the situation that they're all in now. And he held on to that and was sort of like the. the Partly the group conscience. The moral, they have raised a very good point that the moral compass of this group doesn't last very long. <laughs> That's right. Precisely because they're moral. Now, who I mean, was the, yeah, well, who was the other moral compass guy in the beginning? The guy that used to do the um, lookout on top of that camper, the old man. Oh, he, you you would have to ask me that now. It, um, not that Dale. Dale. Yeah, exactly. Dale. Dale was was the the moral compass. Yeah, he didn't last either. So. And then Beth became the moral compass, and we saw what happened to her. But CB brings up an interesting point. I mean, <clears throat> we've always had uh, doomsday movies. We've always had end of the world, and what always happens. Everybody bands together for the greater good, except for the one guy who has to be the antagonist, which causes them to, you know, be led down a path of destruction that makes the story more interesting. I don't think they do that here. I mean, they do arc the characters to a certain degree to kind of push buttons and get reactions from people. But this is probably closest to what would happen in an apocalyptic world. I mean, you're going to have all these bands of people that, that suddenly have different morals. I mean, look at the uh, characters from, um, from Terminus. They were out to help mm-hmm. people until they got conquered and raped and murdered, and then they, beca- they became cannibals. The world turned them into that. But you would think that at some point, you know, if you have two, two groups of ten people, a group of 20 people would be more stable and, and more able to support themselves. But it's, it's sort of the, the every man for himself. I mean, how tightly uh, bound is, is the group that we're following uh, in The Walking Dead? How soon could people turn against each other th- there? I mean, you see, see Rick, if you juxtapose Rick, as he was in the first episode versus where he is now, there's a complete moral descent of his character. <laughs> oh, he's dipped further and came back a little bit. He's, he, he went from being a, a police officer, you know, serve yeah. and protect, to the president, to well, you, I don't want the responsibility, uh, to this isn't a democracy, you do what I say. <laughs> I, believed, right. I believe the term coined on the Internet was rictatorship. <laughs> and and part of the thing that you see in in all of this is the the complete inhumanity of of the uh, people that are in this group. If they see a walker that isn't a threat, a moral person would put them out of their misery. These people just sort of look and go, oh, there's you know half a torso, we don't have to worry about it, and just continue on. And this. Thing that used to be a human being is left to continue as, as, a, as a walker. We've actually seen that before. I believe it was season two when Andrea and uh, Daryl were out and some poor guy just couldn't face you know, living life in and, and the zombie world and he hung himself not knowing that that would turn him into a walker and uh-huh. he'd be hanging from this rope forever. And Andrea made <laughs> Daryl shoot him in the head with an arrow and Daryl's reaction was, you know, what a waste of an arrow. <laughs> right, yeah, and when you, you, you saw the same thing in the, uh, in the uh, golf club when uh, Beth was looking for a drink. In one of the scenes in there, they were going through one of the rooms, and there was three or four people that were actually hanging from the ceiling. Um, and they were all twitching and everything, of course, because they were now walkers, or in their case, hangers. Um, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> and uh, it was just like, you know, they're not a bother, so we're just going to continue on. The only time they do anything about the walkers now is if, if, if they're under attack. Other than that, it's just, uh, it's just another piece of flotsam and jetsam uh, in, in the countryside. Well, you saw that a little bit in this episode because when they got into the um, gated community, and man, I don't even know where this place is. Is it South Carolina? Is it is it Richmond, Virginia? <laughs> it's supposed <laughs> to be of, Virginia, but it's supposed to be. But I think they're teasing us a little bit because in the comic book it was South Carolina, but they dropped some hints that they are in Virginia. But they get in there, and there's a few walkers running around, and they're kind of leaving them alone until they spot them. And then Michonne's like, "Yeah, you know, I'll take care of them." That's another thing. Their biggest priority is looking out for people that are alive and yeah. not, not the dead. And you also see in, in that same little exchange uh, with uh, Glenn and Rick. Now, you remember Glenn, he didn't want to go back and slaughter all the people at Terminus. He wanted to help the guy that was inside the, uh, the uh, tanker at Terminus. He said, that's who we are. We still help people. Mm-hmm. And he's coming off of that. Glenn's gone into a real dark place, probably pushed there between the loss of Washington and uh, his wife losing her sister. Mm-hmm. And he's just plunged into a very, very dark place. And for a while, he was beginning to show signs of being the moral compass. Well, the, I mean, Maggie and Glenn have just sort of created their own little group that's going along with the rest of them now that they're a uh, husband and wife and they're they're sort of they're, they're part of it but they're not part of it in that they're 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 sort of with each other in this group um and and who knows how long uh, it would not surprise me if the two of them went off Ooh. that you know that's that's an entire that's a definite possibility because we We'll talk in a little bit later in the show about how this kind of branches off from the comic book because uh, we know what's going to happen to Glenn in the comic book. But uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Let's get back to uh, uh, Tyrese. I mean, man, this guy had some demons inside of him. He, he could not ever collect his, his, his head around the, the – his life the way that it was and his life the way that it is now. He was, he was always conflicted and that conflict is what ended up killing him because he wasn't paying attention. It's basically what killed him is he wasn't paying attention. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They always clear. I mean, you clear every room in the house. Yep. Once you go into a house, he's looking and, and you know, I'm looking at him. I'm watching him look at the two twins on the wall and he sees the one dead twin, you know, this is basically screaming. The other twin is right behind you. Mm-hmm. And the well, reason they did he have went- the shadow, uh, underneath the, like one of the doors, I, I'm assuming it was a bathroom. Who knows? Mm-hmm. But, uh, he was walking down the hall. There was obviously a walker in there mm-hmm. and he um, heard it. That's what, that's what, took and you can him see the, the feet hall. moving back and forth. Uh, with the light underneath, you can see the shadows of uh, of feet moving back and forth. And, and and God forbid, I mean, you know, walkers aren't real good with doorknobs, but um, if it had one of those lever switches on the door and just, you know, by flapping its arms around, ended up opening it, I mean, be careful, folks. <laughs> <laughs> and in case he, you're ever in a real zombie apocalypse. You know, yeah. <laughs> Be careful if, if 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 there's a walker behind a door, you know, just don't ignore it. Now, I have been camping in mosquito infested uh campgrounds and when this happens for weeks afterwards, anytime the wind blows against your skin, you pop it because you think it's a mosquito. <laughs> They've been in a zombie infested world for anywhere from a year and a half to two years. And the reason we know this is because um uh, uh, Judith was impregnated after the, uh, after the uh, apocalypse began, and she's probably about one and a half, two years old now. or She's less than one and a half years old now. So it's got to, it had, has to be going on for two years. Wouldn't you just be so prone to look behind every door and every shadow because you don't know when you go around the corner if there's not going to be a herd standing right, staring oh. right at you? For him to let his guard down like that, I really, my honest opinion, he was ready to go. 
Well, you you could. T- I was surprised he lasted as long as he did. I mean, when he didn't kill the um, the gentleman that he had in the cabin, Martin. When it, yeah, when it was him and the baby and and and, and Martin. Mm-hmm. When he, he, he and not only did, couldn't he kill him, he said that he did. Yeah, that never made much sense. How did that guy get away? But, you know, it's very few flaws in the story. Uh, that one, you know, they never looked for a body. They never went there to check. Carol didn't check on it. And he had that guilt. That's why Martin was the first one he saw. He had that guilt that if he would have killed Martin, Martin wouldn't have regrouped with the rest of the termites, and they wouldn't have come back and attacked. Mm-hmm. Bob had a very good point. They didn't kill me. The walker that bit me and the food bank killed me. They just chopped my leg off and ate me. Which Ugh. led to a really good Bob BQ jokes and kebab jokes and so forth. <laughs> but um, he's battling his inner demons. You know, he, I think he really wanted to go. Because you can hear in the... you got to remember, these aren't the girls talking to him. This isn't Bob talking to him. This is his own subconscious talking to him. Mm-hmm. You're talking about all the flashback scenes. Yeah, all the through. scenes with the ghosts. Yes. The, the, those are his subconscious thoughts. They're telling him it's... And they, they have one overlying thought. You've done all you can do. It's time to go. You so, know, you've done what you can. This, it's better where we are. And, so he's trying to convince himself. And this isn't the first time he's done. done this. I mean, you hear him in the episode trying to tell Noah, you know, don't give up. He's trying to convince himself. He's saying, don't give up. You know, after, um, and I, I forget the name of his girlfriend. And CB brought up an interesting point why she wasn't in the flashbacks. She must have wanted more than scale uh, <laughs> to come back <laughs> on the show. But, uh, well, it does, it does give you interesting thoughts of, of, of why, because she, she was his rock, and then she was gone. And uh, maybe that's why she did not appear, because... Everyone else who appeared had some influence on his life, but was nowhere near as influential as, as she was. And that was a love interest. It could be. And maybe something they to did. live for. Maybe they did want to bring Yeah, you. Hey, there you go. That would be something to live for to find that again. And, and like I'm saying, I think he wanted to go. Because you could even hear him telling Noah earlier, you know, after she died. He just jumped headfirst into a pile of walkers, and for some ungodly reason, none of them bit him. He made it out. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was pr- pretty unexplainable, but um, he was trying to convince Noah not to do the same, not to give up. And how in the heck? Noah is limping all over the place from his bum leg, but he outruns everybody <laughs> I on that. the show last night. <laughs> Yeah, he's a quick gimper, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Except for those two walkers on the porch that get him pinned down. Yeah, you can't get away from them, and they and they they always <laughs> shuffle all over the place. <laughs> yeah, they had a lot of walkers show up there all of a sudden. But uh, I don't know if we mentioned this before, but this episode was directed by uh, Greg Nicotero, and uh, he was on the Talking Dead after the uh, oh after actually after. Uh, the Saul, what is it? Better Call Saul? Yes, yeah. Better Call Saul. I watched five minutes. I couldn't really get into it. I never got into the um, Breaking Bad either, though, so that might have something to do with it. But he says he will have at least two more director gigs this season, season including the season finale. Oh. And, you know, the epic tale he took us on just going through Tyrese's death and the basic uh, reassemblance of the team. And they got back together, and then they split up all of a sudden. That's what I can't figure out. Well, I think got, they like to Glenn. have stories. Yeah, you got Glenn on one side, and you got uh, Maggie was on the other team. I wonder how right. they manage that. And this is a little bit of an homage to the uh, comic book, because this exact same group were the ones that were going from neighborhood to neighborhood to neighborhood scouting for stuff when they ran into the next big villain uh, in the comic book series that we may or may not see in this one. Well, I think they always have to have villains. I mean, they had the governor for a long time, and uh, based on the last show, he still hasn't gone away. (laughs) Uh, 
and who knows, he may re, uh, reappear in others' dreams. Um, and you had the uh, group at Terminus, and you had the group that, uh, the, the small male group that uh, uh, Daryl hooked up with for mm -hmm. a, a short period of time. So there, there are always villains out there. You know, there. they actually have a name. They're called the Claimers. The Claimers. Because their, their big thing was to if you claim it, it's yours. Yes. Right. So the, the, everybody's got a name, even if it's just a uh, name given to them by the Internet. Yeah, I think there's a new villain right around the corner. I can't wait to see who it's going to be. Well, all, kind of, all roads are kind of pointing to this uh, character in the comic book called Nagin. <sighs> and uh, we see a lot of foreshadowing. Uh, he's the person that actually kills Glenn, you know, spoiler alert. Uh, doesn't, mean, doesn't mean it's going to happen here because we've got a lot of characters that are supposed to be dead in the comic book that aren't and a lot of people that are still supposed to be alive in the comic book that are that died seasons ago so i think they're we we're talking about this in pre-show i think they tease us a little bit they know we know what's going to happen in the comic book so they give us a few clues and then they take them back because the entire terminus cannibal group i don't believe they were in the comic book so you never know what's going to be right around the corner well, I think they can afford to jump off the comic book as long as, you know, it, basically as long as Rick's around, they can pretty much do what they want. Because if he goes, I think the, the, there goes the leader of the group, and the group is just going to splinter at that point, because I can't see anybody else taking it over. Well, Rick's not even supposed to have his right hand at this point. In the comic <laughs> book, uh, the governor cut off Rick's right hand, which... Basically, they gave that honor to uh, Merle when he had to lose his, uh, his right hand. Mm -hmm. So they kind of shifted things around. Uh, but uh, the governor chops off Rick's right hand, I guess, for Merle and feeds it to his Walker daughter. Ugh. So Rick goes through 90% of the comic to date without a right hand. And he's still a badass. <laughs> yeah, well... He's, he's going to continue to be a badass, and, his, and his, his son is following in his steps. You still see some little kid uh, stuff uh, in Carl, but uh, it, it, as time goes on, it becomes less and less, and he's just as uh, uh, hard, a, had a, hard a guy as Rick is at this point, which is unfortunate for, for a uh, kid that age. Yeah, he was, he was going down a dark path, and then he got to eat a whole can of uh, chocolate pudding on top of a roof. <laughs> yeah, but that that only lasted so long. <laughs> you see, I love the interaction between him and Michonne. You haven't seen that in the past few yeah. episodes at all. And uh, well, let's talk about let's talk a little bit about the geographical confusion because this really got me. Mm -hmm. uh, the um, well, it they actually changed the name in the comic book. I think it's the Wiltshire Estates, and right. in the uh, on the show it was Shire Wilt. Yeah, Shire Wilt Estates. Shire Wilt, yeah. Now, I'm not sure if they went to South Carolina or Richmond because when they were at the location, they said they were 100 miles from D.C., which would be Richmond, and the other group had traveled 500 miles from Atlanta, which would be about Richmond, and they all kind of re-upped at the end, but I believe in the comic book it was supposed to be in South Carolina, and you yeah. saw that mile marker 221 in South Carolina. Right. Well, you, well I know that uh, they said that uh, Noah said that he lived in Virginia. Mm-hmm. And they went to where he lived, so that had to be Virginia. At one point when he was talking to um, Beth, he mentioned South Carolina. So I think they try and tease us a little bit because they know we know what's in the comic book. <laughs> but, yeah, and, but you would think Noah would know where he lived. But I, like I said, earlier he had mentioned going to South Carolina, and then he mentioned going to Richmond. Yeah. And the reason why they have to do this loop is because um, Eugene didn't confess he was full of crap until they got right outside of D.C. in Richmond in the comic book. And they've already, they've already burst that bubble, so now they have to have something else that gets them to Richmond so they can continue the story. The other hypothesis I saw bouncing around is that Carol's group was in Richmond and Rick's group was in South Carolina, in which case they had the best walkie-talkies on the face of the planet. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, that would be a, a, a bit of a stretch, literally and figuratively. Well, they were te- they were testing the range of the walkie, so that's but that's about three hundred miles. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you got a hell of a skip off the atmosphere. Huh. I thought it was kind of interesting during um, Tyrese's flashbacks, and the whole episode was with, with a, just a slight foreshadowing, which we'll talk about toward the end of the show. Um, was Tyrese's reflection on his own life. And every so often, like, he would get into it with the governor, and all of a sudden a second walker was getting in, was right in his face, and he got bit again. I, I, I didn't really see him living through this because they teased us. You know, he's dead. He's, he's got his arm hacked off. They're going to, they, you know, they, what do you call that, uh, CB? Oh, he got Herschel. He got Herschel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the new phrase. <laughs> oh, I can't see that if I ever lose an arm. I'm going, I got Herschel, man. I got Herschel. Uh, so he he actually saw the girls. Uh, who was that? Uh, Lizzie? Uh, I know Wendy yeah, just calls her the I, creepy I, little kid. The creepy girls. The creepy little kid. <laughs> she was creepy. Uh, she's going to be, you know, she's going to be a hot, uh, Oscar-winning actress one day, so we can make fun of her now. <laughs> but uh, you see them holding his arm out, and all of a sudden, that's in real life them cutting his arm off. Yeah. Yeah, they're they're tugging on it, saying, "Come on, come on." Now, did you notice though in the flight scene, as they're trying to run him out back to the car, and they got to go through the gate where the walkers are there again, and that was. Pretty funny thing, you know, they all go for the walkers and, you know, there's that one that looks like Mary Lou Retton coming right at him. Yeah. I'm thinking, Mary Lou Retton, I wonder where she was. <laughs> Too tall for Mary Lou. Apparently she was in Richmond, or <laughs> South Carolina. Pretty upset they went right by my house and never stopped. <laughs> but That uh, group I would think we'd just let go right by. <laughs> But, that was one of my favorite scenes when when um, Noah is on the ground with Tyrese on the ground and they open those gates and they got to slaughter those walkers. And that's it's what's all happening. kind of in slow motion. That's what's and, happening in real time. But did you, you notice when Tyrese flashed back, they were still running and they were checking cars and Daryl was with them. No, I didn't notice that. Yeah. Because I thought it was the same scene, but they were running from the house to the gate. But in Tyrese's mind, he was with them as they were checking cars and doing something else probably weeks or years ago or yeah. months ago. And Daryl was actually with them. And then they've got to go back Notes. through the, I believe it was supposed to be bob wire or razor wire, but it looked more like cord, even though it did rip Noah's eye open. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people didn't catch that because we thought the opening two minutes was a flashback and they were at Beth's funeral. But if you notice, Noah's eye is cut and it didn't get cut until after they visited uh, Noah's house of horrors. Mm-hmm. And uh, well, the so camera work was real jumpy there, too, when they were when they were doing that at the at the at the gravesite at the beginning. They did that on purpose. A lot. We're, yeah. we're all expecting because that's. If you've ever heard the show with Slim, Slim's biggest gripe, gripe is not another flashback. <laughs> I don't know when they're flashing back. It confuses me. <laughs> Even though there's a big T H E N underneath the thing when it when they flash back. <laughs> yeah, this happened before. Um, but he and a bunch of other people hate the flashbacks, so they put these in looking like flashbacks, and they were really basically premonitions of what was coming up. And a lot of people caught that. A lot of people caught Noah crying with the gash over his eye that he didn't get. I guess they went back and studied frame by frame and went and wrote their... Um, they wrote they their, checked the Zapruda film and uh, yeah. figured out what was going on. Yeah. It, they probably sat there for hours and hours and hours and wrote a 10,000-page essay on the whole thing. And then I get to read about it and talk about it for 10 seconds on the radio. So it works for me. As long as somebody else is doing the work, I like it. Oh, yeah. There's well, Noah is deadly there. on people. I'm telling you, anybody he gets involved yeah. with is is in a lot of trouble. 
Yeah, they talked about that in The Talking Dead. They actually asked for a vote. Is Noah a jinx? <laughs> and it was Noah's 55. a Jonah. I mean, uh, Noah. Is Noah a jinx? And uh, No, he's a Jonah. He's a Jonah? You don't know the term a Jonah? No. <laughs> oh, I know a Jaina. Just... Okay, no, 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 no. J O N A H. Jonah. Someone who brings bad luck. Oh, see, I don't like bad luck, so I wouldn't know stuff like that. And I'm, I wish you hadn't have taught me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize. But they asked if he was a jinx, and it was 55 45, so I guess they feel sorry for the character. I can't but wait he, for... he almost got Michonne killed. Where was that? Oh, when she uh, went for at the, the end when they were fighting all the uh, zombies, uh, the, the walkers that came through the gate. Because of him, she lost her sword. Oh, when did she lose her sword? She must there, was have... a, there, was a, there was a point in time where, where she was defenseless and a, and a walker was coming uh, oh, it at It was her. the uh, porch zombie. One of them had a piece of rebarb in his neck, and she went to yeah, slice she went it. To, she, yeah, she went to slice it, and she hit the rebar, and <laughs> that was right. bad. Right. Right. I wonder, did somebody stab him, or, or is he a, uh, or is he a zombie weapon? Because this guy uh, in the comic book, this villain in the comic book, he uses zombies as weapons, and that's why I think we saw all those torsos and so forth. Do you ever wonder though, uh, with all the commercials that they put on The Walking Dead, and they got a good selection of commercials because they're a very popular show. We never see any bath salts commercials. <laughs> bath salts. Yeah. You know, when people eat the bath salts and they chew people's face off like zombies? <laughs> no, I've never noticed any of that. <laughs> well, there, there were actually a few things that people did notice, uh, and we've already talked about a few of them, but the um, fact that Tyrese's father, who we didn't get to do a lot of backstory, but uh, it's very well known to the characters, to the actors themselves, to build their character, that his uh, father was an NFL player and an NFL coach. I think Tyrese uh, reckoned him like a Tony Dungy uh, on the um, Talking Dead. That's the inspiration of how he was, he was developed as an adult or developed as a child and grew up. He, his father was like a Tony Dungy. And that's, he said, you Tony Dungy's son killed himself. Oh, that isn't good. Thanks for bringing <laughs> us down, man. Well, <laughs> I, it just, well, I mean, did Tyrese kill himself? Mm, we think so. Okay. Hey. Well, maybe that's maybe that's the connection. Ooh. Yeah. Well, you know, when they're on that car ride at the very beginning, I noticed this um, on on the way to Virginia. Tyrese is talking to the whole carload of people and t- talking about his dad, and he said his dad always. They said it to be a productive member of the community. You've got to listen to the news. And so whenever he they were he and Sasha were riding in the car with their dad, he always had the news on. I thought that was interesting because that plays into that radio playing later in the show. Yes, because because he always had to listen to the bad news, right? Whatever your, it was, and, and understand duty, what it was. Your duty as a citizen of the world, yes, is to is keep to know up with the news. On. Yep, and they uh, it, it's kind of ominous that they're talking about cannibalism because that wasn't the zombie apocalypse and one of the things that a lot of people call it that was actually andrew lincoln doing his his native accent on the radio and that was that was crazy i did not catch did you catch that cb that was rick on the the radio the radio broadcast it sounded like bbc with the rwanda genocide from uh from the early 90s or so forth yeah and yeah. they're talking about the cannibalism, and that's one of the things he had it, the 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 sound that was echoing through his head whenever he had these uh, recollections. Um, that was Andrew Lincoln. That was Rick, in his no, native in his native accent. Oh jeez. Yeah, he's a British dude. Well, the the producers obviously cheaped out. They got him to do double duty. <laughs> they were trying to get. They they mentioned they were trying to get someone else with a with a nice British accent, but they couldn't afford him. <laughs> Sean Connery. Sean Connery would have done it. Yeah, he needs to work. Why didn't they ask him? Well, hey, that would be a heck of a hook to get people to watch the show. <laughs> <laughs> I like my zombies shaking, not stood. Yeah, I mean, you know, 
uh, guest uh, uh, actor, uh, Sean Connery, you don't think that would draw some people in? Hey, they drew a lot of people in. We'll talk yes, about they the, did. We'll talk about the ratings in a little while. Uh, a lot of people are panning the ratings because we have some pro-Grammy people that don't want to admit that the uh, the Grammys lost share to The Walking Dead. Uh, we've got people who just don't like The Walking Dead and they want to they want to harp on it. But uh, they had some very decent numbers. But uh, a couple other things that people noticed uh, about this last episode, the uh, and I, I spotted this right off the bat, and I told Wendy about it, and she didn't notice it. She didn't. Know, she don't notice anything. I don't. <laughs> when he's having these conversation with his friends, their death wounds are there. Uh, you can see um, um, which one is it? Micah. You can see her wound. I think she had a stomach wound. Uh, yeah. You can see Lizzie's head wound, where she looked at the flowers and got shot in the head. Mm-hmm. Look at the flowers. I still love that. <laughs> but uh and then at the end when he's made peace and he's ready to go you basically see him talking to all his friends and they're welcoming him and they're saying this is the way this is what you should. This is what you should do. And it's not them. It's not their ghost. It's it's his own inner self telling him this. And all their wounds are gone. They're perfectly clean. Mhm. And when they when they show Bob when he's inside the bedroom dying, uh, Tyrese is inside the bedroom dying. You do, you see Bob's stump, and then when they're in the car and and he's ready to go, Bob turns around. I wonder if his stump was healed. I wonder if his leg was back. I don't know. No, because they ate that. <laughs> you can't re- you can't return the barbecue special. Well, you, I mean. Since it's all in his mind, you can have anything that you want. I just find it interesting that it was all the demons of his past. Well, I do have to give it to Greg. Uh, am I going to mispronounce his name again? Nicoletto? They, Nick Terra. Nick Terra. I know I was going to do that. I did it like 10 times in pre show. If Greg's listening to the show, which I know you're not, I'm sorry. Uh, but uh, you got to give it to him. They didn't go full blown zombie nerd protocol. You know, he didn't turn. They didn't have to stab him in the head with a knife. Mm -hmm. You know, they could have saved him. They were trying to save him. They had to cauterize the wound, and they couldn't do that. So he bled out. He basically just died, and you see him in the background, you know, like a sixteenth of a mile away down the road, and they all get out of the van, and they pull him out of the van. Yeah, but I'm assuming at that point they make sure he's not going to turn. Yeah, but they don't go into the technicalities of doing it. They do it in a very artistic way. From a distance. Yeah, yeah they, you, know they, what's, you know what's happening because you've watched the show. They gave his character some poetic life or some poetic justice and let him go peacefully. Yeah, they, I wonder where they were going to go to cauterize the wound they had called carol and apparently she was getting it they told him to get uh uh, tyrese's sister and carl out of there because they didn't need to see it oh that's right and the next thing you see is the funeral with uh reverend psycho giving the last rites and you know presiding (laughs) presiding over the uh, funeral i don't like that guy yeah, but he feels like he has a job now. He can preside over funerals because he really didn't have too much to do except, <laughs> uh, except cause problems. You know, one aspect of The Walking Dead that I would have thought would have raised its ugly head by now, and it's only been mentioned in passing once or twice, you've got a zombie apocalypse, a full-blown rising of the dead, but you don't have any religious fanatics anywhere yet. Mm-hmm. You know, we even saw there was a movie called Stakeland, where yep. vampires. Did you see that movie? Oh yeah, that was a good movie. Yeah, and there it was, was a whole cult that would drop uh, these vampires onto settlements because they wanted to purify the world for the second coming. Mm-hmm. We haven't seen that, and this is you know this would you think this would be fertile, hellfire and brimstone stuff exactly, sure. which we could see later on. Yeah. There's a lot of things we could see later on. <laughs> yeah, there was a, lo- yeah, a lot of people that, that um, are into the comic book 
saw a little bit of foreshadowing that uh, they might not want to admit, or they might not want to come true. Glenn is supposed to die very, very soon from this stage forward as far as the comic book's concerned, which doesn't mean he will. But he's killed by a um, villain called Nagin with a baseball bat. And what did Glenn find in this episode? He found a baseball baseball bat. bat. And we see, uh, if you notice, the graffiti on the walls of the... um, Oh, what are they I noticed that I don't remember what it said. Wolves not far. Yeah. Yeah. Wolves. Okay. So who who are the wolves? Is it like a you know now, there wild was a dogs group. or is it a group? We we do know in the comic book there's a group called the Whispers. And they use dog wolves because you gotta you gotta theorize at this point, any domesticated dog that was around two years ago went up to its dead master and got eaten. <sighs> okay, so any dogs that ran off into the woods and are pretty much on their second generation by now, probably. And they're pretty well feral by now. So there are probably packs of wild dogs forming out in the woods. You know, you would think after two, two and a half years of, of no humans around. And in the comic book, there was a group called the Whispers who used wolves or wild dogs uh, to help them, you know, defend against, you know, other groups. And we see the W. So maybe they're going to take the aspect of the Whispers and call some new group the Wolves. Yeah. Because in the preview of for next week, what do we see? We see a bunch of wild dogs come out of the woods. I know. Yeah, all these dogs. Right. And in the bedroom, when Tyrese is dying, I did see this too. There's dog pictures on the wall. So there's two of them. So there were a lot of Easter eggs in that yeah. bedroom. Uh, dead end, do not enter, you know, all kinds of little well, signs you'd see in a kid's bedroom. Yeah. Uh, military stuff for Bob. Uh, there was a guitar for Beth. Uh, yeah. There were flowers and pictures of the house that looked like the one that uh, the two little creepy girls got killed in front of. Oh, I was wondering what that house was. They kept showing the little house in the picture frame over and over again. That was the house they temporarily it looks like it. took looks up residence. Very much in. like it. Okay, yeah. when the little girls were killed, that's you're right. That's that's it. And you're trying to figure out whose blood it is that that's on it until you find out it's Walker blood. Yeah, it's a, the Walker, the second Walker that bit him. Yeah, the adult Walker as opposed to the child Walker. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I love the Easter eggs. That's one of the best things about this show. Love trying to find them and. They didn't really talk about it a lot, but one of the visions that uh, Tyrese kept having was going down that railroad track toward Terminus. Yeah. And you kept seeing that one track that went into the woods, and it was almost like a tunnel of woods. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was just, it was basically his emotions for the past year or so. But I think CB brought up a really good point. Why wasn't his love interest from season three, I believe? From the prison. Mm-hmm. I think her name was Karen. And she didn't last very long. I, I don't even think they were together that long at all. Yeah, but why wasn't she there? I mean, she she would have been the, the, the strongest influence on his life. You would think. And his sister wasn't there either, but she's also still alive. Uh, I think he'd spent... Yeah, I think it was basically dead people. He had spent the last several episodes trying to get her out of her dark place. You know, maybe he thought his job was done there. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, she got knocked in the head by the officer. Oh, that's right. That's right. And she, so she kind of let up off of her, uh, her toughness there for a little while. And now you see Michonne trying to be the voice of reason for the group. She's yeah, trying she's, to get them to settle she's, down. She's too much of an individualist. Yeah, but she wants I mean, to stop. She's tired of being out there just surviving. Well, she wants to build up, stay in the neighborhood you know, build up the, you know, cut down the forest, rebuild the, you know, the fences, the gates and all. And, and she goes around the corner and sees that, what looks like a tank has come through there. Yeah. yeah. And that's one of the things that this uh, Nagin character is, is known for. He comes and offers to trade with you and, and join the alliance. And basically he's just enslaving your community. Wow. 
And he so, apparently uses uh, zombies as weapons, too. And they may be trying to incorporate the next couple of villains from the comic book into one really big villain in the TV show. Oh, that could be the wolves, whisperers, and the Snagan person. Yep. And his group is called the Saviors. So mm-hmm. they, ha- they do have a little bit of that religious zing to them. Yeah, well, they may be the uh, the the fundamentalist then. Yeah, yeah. And I, and since they're on their way to Washington, what are they going to find in Washington? Has as as it now turned into a theocracy, maybe? Uh, Ooh, or if it's still there, I mean, you see what happened to it. Atlanta's a ghost a ghost town. Yeah, but uh, you would think there would be certain sections of of the country that could remain well protected. It doesn't seem to have happened uh, because, you know, once the, once the walkers break in, there doesn't seem to be a way to stop them because it just multiplies. It's sort of like, uh, I don't know, did you ever see World War Z? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, once, once the, the, At the like dollar theater, I want my money back, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got a point. It's, it's an infection, and the infection mm-hmm. spreads with, with bodies. It's just like the bubonic plague. Once you run sure. out of people to spread the plague, the plague dies. And you go into place, and apparently these things don't die at all. Their their skulls get thin enough you can crush them with an eggshell after a few years. But, uh, in fact, there was one, uh, I don't know if you noticed, when they were in the food bank, uh, Sasha crushed one of the uh, heads of one of the zombies in there, excuse me, one of the walkers in there, uh-huh. with a plastic shopping cart. You know, one of the handheld yeah. ones. Yeah. Uh, and skulls do not break that easy. Trust me, I've tried. <laughs> and... <laughs> But when you go to some place like D.C., D.C. is not overly populated, but there, it's a huge population. It's not like sure. Greenville, South Carolina. Um, but you've got to figure some place with a lot of land a lot, where they can just spread out and roam would mm-hmm. be a little more secure than a tight urban area. You've got to figure that the island of Manhattan is just infested. Oh, yeah. True, but if you, if you wiped it out, and then uh, reestablished uh, a, a colony, a, a human colony, in some isolated uh, section of the country that you would be able to maintain it. You would think. And then again, it's, uh, it goes back to uh, the premise that they had last season. You know, you fear the living. You don't fear the dead. Yeah, which is, which is what it seems to be. I mean, they, they have more trouble with the living than they do with the dead. Because all the various groups are, you know, it's basically shoot first, ask questions later. I can't wait to see if they're going to actually make it to Washington, D.C. this season. Or this next show on Sunday, is it going to be the introduction of some new, you know, crisis threat? Well, from the preview... They run out of food. They run out of water. They're all in deep, deep despair. And, you know, this isn't your superhero movie. It isn't your everybody call to arms, everybody do the right thing, and you know, everybody act like a Boy Scout. You know, there are threads, and those threads are unraveling. You know, you could have people that want to go their separate ways. You could have people that want to be the boss. You know, I'm, I'm still waiting for Abe and Rick to get into it again. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Glenn, he wanted to be the man there for a while, and he's in a very dark place. Uh, what happens when they start starving, when they can't find water, when they can't find a safe place to shelter? Uh, who are they going to blame? They're going to blame the leader, and things start happening. Then you see the pack of wild dogs come in. Mm-hmm. So you don't know if they're going to get a, uh adversarial Right. Situation I don't know if they're going to make it to D.C. Yeah. Well, they may make it there eventually. Maybe eventually, yeah. Yeah. Well, it took them five and a half seasons to make it no further than 30 miles outside of Atlanta. (laughs) And then in the blink of an eye, they were 500 miles away in Richmond, Virginia. Yeah. And apparently, um, uh, Greg uh, Nicoletto, did I say that right? Nicotero? Nicotero. 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 Let's call him Greg. Greg. Greg (laughs) said on The Talking Dead that uh, approximately 17 days had passed since uh, Beth got killed 
and the beginning of this episode. So that's yes, how much so we didn't see the whole Beth, you know, funeral or what what they do with her body. What they, and, unless maybe we'll see it in a flashback coming up during this season. But oh, I'm sure. I'm does sure. Does it matter? A, I, I kind of want to see what what they do with her. Daryl's carrying her out, and I don't they know. They dig a hole and they dump her in. <laughs> Pretty much. And 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 Father Nutcase. You know, says something over her. Uh, <laughs> they didn't her have grave to. De- and... They didn't have to de-zombify her. She got her head blown off. Yeah, I mean, she was. They, they, that was all done in one uh, swell foop. I mean, it was. <laughs> it was very efficient. I was surprised to hear Rick say that he didn't think Dawn intentionally meant to do it. Like they're trying to give some grace to that character. I thought mm-hmm. Dawn was going to join the group. I honestly did. I, I thought yeah. they were going to bring her in and turn her. Uh, but you know, I, I was wrong. <laughs> like a zombie, like a like a walker, they're gonna turn her. <laughs> Are they ever gonna get her away from that that group dynamic that she didn't like anyway? And uh, maybe she would have kept all their clothes clean for them. Well, her, her her problem was she had hope. Yeah, I she mean, was a little they, she was a little OCD. I think that was her problem. Well, they were going to come. When someone came, everything was going to be all right. And, and until Beth, then, we're going to be OCD. Yeah, and and Beth was trying to tell her, no, nobody's coming. <laughs> this is it. This is what you got. That ended kind of in a shot. And you hear them talking about it. You hear Noah and Tyrese talking about it because he's he's saying, look, you know, Tyrese was the one that wanted to do it that way. Rick wanted to go in guns a-blazing mm-hmm. and get everybody, you know, kill everybody and get Beth out. And uh, the plan did work. Noah was trying to tell him the plan worked. Your plan worked. We couldn't control the fact that Beth stabbed her in her boob at the end of the show. Mm. Yeah. I mean, what was that all about? She'd had enough. It was a breaking point. She said, yeah, but, uh, I get it now. And because she me. knew that Noah was going to come back. <sighs> and she said that, and she was so smug. She was almost like, see, I'm always right. Mm-hmm. And she'd just been under her thumb for so long that I guess she just finally snapped. Yeah, but she had planned it because she uh, she stuck the uh, scissors up uh, in in the cast the that was cast. on her wrist. Yeah, but she was uh, getting so she ready. Knows, she was she, getting she ready was to kill do that, that doctor though. Before she she stuck him in there, and she was getting ready to kill that doctor before uh, Carol came in. No, but the, the, in the last episode was when she uh, grabbed the she had the scissors underneath the mattress or something and took them out and, and slipped them into her cast when she was getting ready to leave. She was going to do something then. Yeah, like she did previously when she was going to kill that doctor. She was she had some idea in mind that she was going to protect herself. I don't know if it was this premeditated toward dawn, but you, you could see the look in her eye like, oh hell no, you didn't. <laughs> And she goes for the scissors and takes them out. There's a lot of in-depth thought you had to put into this. This isn't a TV show that's written willy-nilly by any means. And you can hardly see anything coming. I usually see almost everything coming in most dramas. But mm-hmm. this one, they just they lead you down one road just so they can yank you in the other direction. Mm-hmm. Well, they must have it planned out. You know, God only knows how far in advance. Well, they and they have to watch out for leaks too. Did you hear when they uh, they built the soundstage and closed it in the room where uh, where uh, Tyrese was having all the flashbacks or having all the ghost visions? Because mm-hmm. all these old characters would have caused a stir if the media would have saw them walking in. Mm-hmm. So they mm-hmm. had to enclose it and sneak them in and film. Oh wow. And apparently if Beth was still there because she filmed the scene where she got killed and then the one hour later she was filming her ghost scene. Okay. So she never even you know, she never even got a break in between. She knew once she'd gotten killed, she when she did that scene it was just a couple of hours after they had said goodbye to her when she was already filming her own ghost scene. Which I thought was pretty cool. They they were talking about that in the uh Talking Dead. Mm-hmm. I think we got a little bit of flashback because I want to know what the heck that grandfather clock was doing right out in the middle of the road. It was broken. Time doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah. There you go. CB's the only one that sees stuff like this. That's why we got him on the show with us. 
Yeah, and you know, and I've I, I've seen this too. It, it yeah, it all goes back to time. And did you notice when they were walking by the uh, that grandfather clock in the middle of the road? The only one that looks over at it is Tyrese. Oh, I didn't even notice that. Yeah, he's the only one. No one else knows. They just walk past it. He look. He looks real hard at it. So, yeah. But that, I want to see a flashback was... scene like a year from now with the uh, the person that destroyed that that housing development, throwing it in the street. Yeah. See, I'm 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 the fan. I'm the comic book fanboy. I think simple. Some of these some of these uh, artistic shows they just fly right by me. That's yeah, why. The- that's why I got y'all in here. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I understand. I mean, the 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 show was itself that the the last episode was was very uh, divisive. I think some people liked the artistic uh, effort that was made there, uh, which I did. I mean, I enjoyed. I it. did too. It was a it was a change of pace, and every once in a while, you got to throw a change of pace out there. You just can't have people shooting and whacking zombies with sticks. Right. Oh, I, I mean, totally after, agree. After a while, that gets old. Uh, so you you, you got to do something interesting, and that was interesting. Oh, it was well. It was well thought out, and it was well played. Uh, I think mm-hmm. the, I think the actual actors, from what I could tell, uh, the the uh, Daryl actually called Greg in the middle of the Talking Dead because he. He has to watch it the same way we do. They don't get to go watch it beforehand. They have to sit at home and watch it. He Skyped, or yeah, he Skyped to him a voice message saying that it was awesome. It was groundbreaking, yada, yada, yada. I mean, the, even the actors were overwhelmed. Oh, you know? that's cool. And yeah. they lived this. I mean, I'm nowhere near a thespian as, uh, as some of the people on this show. And they were just all blown away by it. And uh, real quick, let's talk about the ratings. Because I think you guys kind of touched on this Monday night, didn't you? You were kind of dwelling, delving into yeah, the, it. The, yeah, the ratings were, uh, it was a little over uh, 10 million, I believe, for, the, for this uh, episode. Um, but the interesting thing was uh, that the show that followed it, that they'd been hyping all week long and all weekend long because they had the, uh, the Walking uh, Dead marathon before it, leading up to this, uh, this latest episode. Every commercial break you saw better yeah. call Saul. <laughs> oh, and uh, the, the, the audience dropped in half. It did, but it was still the uh, all-time high for an AMC series uh, promo, uh, demo, which just wasn't the actual premiere. The actual premiere was the, the next night, but for the demo, it mm-hmm. broke all records for AMC. Uh, I believe it, but... Uh, but the that, drop-off is, was incredible. Yeah, I mean, is, the, is that good news or bad news? Mm-hmm. is the question and i guess the the next uh are they always going to have a uh, walking uh dead as a lead-in for better call saul you you know it's well, going to be for some show or another as long as it's as powerful as it is well i heard the talking dead say no but i mean that, is that what they're going to do for the oh no future? Uh, it it will be on a different night they won't be better call saul because the Talking Dead will take over its regular time right. slot. This is probably just for the uh, series premiere. I doubt they'll do it every okay. single season. Yeah. Well, but then for the series, be, then that that will be telling. Is is what is the uh, ratings when it doesn't have the Walking Dead as a lead in? And they were up against uh, the Grammys, which was down eleven percent from last year, mm-hmm. and uh, the Walking Dead was up from their season finale. And we're just about out of time. Uh, I do want to thank uh, Wendy for being with us tonight and CB. Yes. You're welcome. Hope we're going to have you again next week. And uh, if you're into American Idol, uh, DJ Slim is next. You can catch him and Zip on the American Idol show. What do they call that thing anyway? 